Hey everybody, we are back and in this video we're going to talk about what most people perceive as a center of gravity problem and it's probably not. And I know I've dove into this a little bit in my other videos, but I really want to kind of explain um, uh, some things that I have actually experienced. Okay, one of the things I try to do in my videos is always share my experience. Um, there's a lot of know-it-alls out there and a lot of people that will tell you how things work or don't work that's never done it. Everything I'm telling you about, I have done, okay? So let's dive into this. So I'm gonna start off with this um, uh, P-40 here. The reason I'm doing it is I love it, okay? I just, I think it's one of the coolest airplanes ever made. But what I wanna talk about is where the center gravity is located on it and the pitch instability that people always think is a center of gravity. But I also wanna talk about people who've come to me and say my plane won't stay trimmed and i'm like well define that to me and they're like you know when i'm going really fast it's just wanting to climb and i'm having to push the nose down i'm like if it's a semi-symmetrical or even a flat bottom wing like a clark y airspeed is always going to change your pitch but is it becoming unstable well no it just climbs and i'm like that's normal. When I fly full scale aircraft, I've always got my hand on the, the, the pitch if I'm like climbing out or I'm descending because the faster you go, a semi-symmetrical wing produces more lift. So think about it like this. Let's say you've got a model air aircraft that at 20 mile an hour takes off at its given weight. Let's say we had two pounds to it and it takes 25 miles an hour to get in the air. It means it produced more lift at 25 than it did at 20, at 20 to lift that given weight. So when you're flying your airplane and you're going faster and it's pitching up, that's normal. I mean, that's the reason. Now, if you have a Piper Cub and you want to just fly around at half throttle um, and it changes pitch slowly, what's probably going on is where your fuel tank placement is. Okay. Now, in a perfect world, we would put that fuel tank as close to the center of gravity as possible. But on scale aircraft or a Cub, you can't put the fuel tank in the right place because it would be in the cockpit or it'd be where your rudder pedals go if you want to have a scale cockpit. So, uh, and keep in mind, full scale airplanes have their fuel tanks in the wings on the center gravity line. So as the fuel burns, um, the, the center gravity doesn't change. So, but this isn't the way most model airplanes are done. Most model airplanes, we're putting that fuel tank right on the firewall. Now look how far forward the CG is, I mean, the fuel tank is of that CG. So when the plane's full of fuel, it's nose heavy. That's a reason when you take off on some warbirds, you need to ease that throttle in and get the wind working over your elevator and then let that tail lift and then, you know, use your elevator to control, keep that nose from flipping over. A lot of people, warbirds, add a lot of power and they nose right over. Well, first of all, there's not enough airflow over the elevator yet. Even they go, well, they're saying, well, Damon, my prop blast. Well, if the airplane has any forward movement, the wing's kind of blanking out your elevator a little bit. But at about a third throttle, get it rolling. Stay on the rudder to keep it going down the runway, okay? Don't be like some of the old farts that just always turn right and take off. You know, use your rudder. That's the reason you've got a stick for it. But the thing is, is that when you take off, you're nose heavy. And as you burn fuel, you're slowly becoming tail heavy. Now, real aircraft has a center gravity range. Model aircraft, they always give you a target the, like this. The problem is, is that's not really right. There's a range in there. They're giving you the best possible one to make the plane as easy to fly as possible. I fly all my aircraft with a CG as far aft as I can get it and still recover from a stall. The reason I do that is the plane flies so much better. And I know people are going to go, yeah, but your plane's really sensitive. I'm like, hang on a minute. I'll tell you why it's not. But you look at that. Let's talk about an albatross for a minute. Look at where the CG is on the albatross and look how long that tail is. The longer the tail is, the more uh, moment there is and, and actually the more stable the aircraft is, okay? But you put a, 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 a motor and fuel tank in there. You can't put the fuel tank on the CG because it'd be inside the cockpit and in scale people want to see the rudder pedals. Now, me, I fly electric. My CG never changes as I, I fly around in the air, okay? So I don't have to worry about my CG changing. 
But this has nothing to do with the instability, the pitch instability that people talk about. I hate when I watch a YouTube video and I see a plane take off and it pitches straight for the air and everybody's like, oh, it's tail heavy. They don't know that airplane. They, I'm sure the person who put it on the, uh, however they measure the CG, put it as close to the CG as they could get it. Nobody knowingly takes off with the CG two inches in the wrong direction. So what's causing that plane to be so pitch instability or, or, or pitch giving it such an um, instability to the way it pitches up and down? There's a lot of factors that could go into this, okay? But, but before I dive into it, I do want to talk about your main flying wing and your incidents. And I had a gentleman about a year, year and a half ago, I think he lived in Logansport, Indiana, called me up and says, Damon, my airplane is just a mess. Could, could you look at it? I said, sure. And he drove down to Indy. And when I first looked at it from the front, I said, how did you do your leading edges? And he goes, why do you ask? And I said, does a plane roll? And he goes, yeah, it rolls to the right. And I said, well, when you, how did you sand your leading edges? How did you mark the leading edge? He goes, well, I just sanded them. I said, did you draw a line where the farthest outmost point should be on the leading edge? He goes, no. I just started sanding and it looked good. I said, well, I think your left wing, the front of the airfoil is about an eighth of an inch higher than the right wing. And that's going to cause the plane to roll. And he said, okay. And I said, so you're going to have to uncover that and sand that and get that equal first. And he said, okay. And I said, what else is the plane doing? He goes, it just pitches almost violently. And I said, and, you know, who set up the airplane for me, for you? And he goes, oh, a bunch of guys at the field. I said, okay. I said, well, how many airplanes have you had? He said, about a dozen. I mean, some of my planes fly great, but this plane is really pitch sensitive. And I said, well, okay, let's look at it. Let's turn on your radio. Turns on the radio. He had about 40 degrees of up elevator as his max up elevator. And his down was about probably 30 or 35. I say, why do you have so much elevator? And he goes, everybody said I needed that. And I said, not on a Warbird. I said, you need about 25 degrees and maybe 15 down. Um, so I said, what do you got your exp exponential set up at? He goes, I, don't, I was told not to use my exponentials. And this is where I get really hot people. And I got to be honest, fly the airplane the way you want to fly your airplane. Don't tell other people they don't need something, especially on a Warbird. All the people that go to Top Gun and go to the Nats, well, I shouldn't say all, all the ones I know use Exponential in their $30,000 jets. Okay, I use Exponential in everything I fly. So here's the thing. Let's say you want an airplane to be able to do a snap roll. Why you want a snap roll of a Warbird, I don't know. Let's just say you want to snap roll a Warbird or you want to do a lump shellac and you want to have massive throws. <clears throat> On your radio should have a button or a switch that turns on and off your expos. Or you could set the different levels of exponentials. Um, or you could have dual rates. Okay, I have both dual rates and expos set up on my radios. So the thing is, is that for normal flying, you want very small movements. You don't want big, massive movements. Even landing, you don't want big movements. Okay, if you're coming in so if you don't have a controlled approach that you need to have 40 degrees of elevator to save your horrible landing, you need to practice landing more, okay? So it's just really important that you think about all the things that make an airplane fly. And then and look at what the manufacturer recommended. If the manufacturer says 25 degrees up and 15 down, that's what you should be putting on your Warbird, not 40 degrees, okay? But the thing I love about Exponential is Exponential gives me a very smooth middle range. So when I'm flaring to land, when you land a real airplane or a full-scale airplane, I'm sorry, they're all real airplanes. When you're flaring, you might be putting really small little micro fast inputs into the yoke, but you're not doing this. <laughs> you do this on a Cherokee or a, <clears throat> like a, a Warrior or an Archer or Dakota and you're going to be all over the place. But you are doing little fine movements. So when you move that stick, you want to know you've got reaction. That's the reason I like fast servos. But with the exponentials in, you're able to be very smooth, small, fast, not doing this. So... Um, there's just a lot that goes on on the airplane that's probably not your center of gravity. 
you know, I fly, like I said, I fly all my airplanes as far aft as I can because I just love to have a, a nice, good flare. Nose heavy airplanes, you can run out of elevator. Okay. So as I kind of close this down here, um, I just want to share all of this is experiences I've had. I'm not making up anything here. I'm not watching something on YouTube and then telling you what to do. This is stuff that I have really done. Okay. All my airplanes, if you've ever seen me fly my 188 inch plane, uh, my MSL2, if you've ever watched me fly um, 20 years ago, my half scale pits, all my planes fly on rails, but they all have the CG as far aft as I can get them. So before you have people start telling you, oh, your CG is off. If you have measured your CG on some rig, and I've only met one person who measured it wrong because I went to the field and the, the guy said I was barely able to fly it, Damon. Um, I think it's really tail heavy. And I put my fingers under the wing and it tilted back and I said, you know, you, you might be right. And like a dumbass, I said, let me fly it. And I tell you, it was almost impossible to fly. I didn't crash it. And I told him, you're a hell of a pilot because that plane is almost unflyable. So we got the CG right on it and, and it flies great. But he used that string method to try to do his CG and it didn't work. The way I do it is I take two pieces of like furring strip, put some felt um, or foam on it. I put it under the wings. I use a couple of basically almost like pencils and I balance it physically like that. And um, that's how I check my CG using, and I'm not saying the big string contraption is wrong, just this person didn't do it right. So I hope this makes sense everybody that if your plane has a pitch instability, don't immediately go to looking at the center of gravity as the problem. There's a lot of other things that could be going on. Keep in mind, even if you got the leading edge wrong on the front of the wing, um, on a semi-symmetrical wing, let's say it's two degrees more positive, that shouldn't cause an instability because you're still going to be trimming as you go faster or slower. The instability is normally from having too big of flying surfaces moving too fast. Um, I shouldn't say too fast, too much because I like the fastest servos I can get. It gives me more control of the, of the plane. So I hope this makes sense to everybody. And if you're one of the haters that are going to come out, that's fine. I, I, I don't mind. But just do me a favor. Quit telling other people how to set up their airplanes if you've never done it yourself. If you fly with the Expedentials and you're flying a trainer or you're flying a glider or you're flying, oh, I shouldn't say that. Most of my friends that fly gliders use Expedentials. So if you're just flying some airplane, let's say you got a Warbird and you don't have Expedentials, fine. But don't tell somebody else that is getting into Warbirds that they don't ever need it. Because it's in your radio for a reason. Why would they have it in the radio? I mean, wouldn't they save money by getting rid of the dual rates and exponentials? I mean, they'd save, what, a half a cent per switch. So think about it. Why are they in our radios? It's because somebody asked for it or they or, or it's, it's needed. Okay, everybody, rock on. Have an awesome day. And uh, I'll have my next video up in less than a week. Take care. Be safe. Bye.